resenting from hate away she threw. We return now to the 1609 quarto of Shakespeare's sonnet. Let's turn to sonnet 145. Those lips that love's own hand did make breathed forth the sound that said, I hate. To me that languished for her sake, but when she saw my woeful state, straight in her heart did mercy come chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in given gentledom and thought it thus a new to greet i hate she altered with an end that followed it as gentle day doth follow night who like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away i hate from hate away she threw and saved my life saying not you The poet is partially describing his love in the first line. It begins like an ordinary love poem by saying, those lips that love's own hand did make. However, in line two, he alludes that she hates something, where he says, breathe forth the sound that said, I hate. This phrase, I hate, should therefore be in quotation marks. She said it to the poet, who admits that he longs for her. He says, to me that languished for her sake. Yet when she saw how smitten he was, he says, but when she saw my woeful state, She pitied him and admonished him for being so lovesick. She saw fit to greet him with the phrase, I hate. She altered with an end seems to me that she has put an end to his chances at being in a relationship with her. He compares that ending to day following night. And like a fallen angel, a fiend, her reason for spurning him flies from heaven to hell. In other words, her motive seems to him to be evil. This line is tricky, since it has been misinterpreted for a long time. I hate from hate away she threw. The three quatrains above it describe how he loved her, but she pitied him. Her ironic mercy was to chide him for his advances. This is an example of three different rhetorical devices. Acheron is where a word is used which is opposite to the normal word that should be applied. The word is mercy. Antiphrasis is the use of words in a sense opposite to its real meaning, exactly what mercy means again. Irony occurs when there is incongruity between what is said, done, meant, or perceived. Again, straight in her heart did mercy come, chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentledom. This is an example of the rhetorical figure of Eliasm, in which he describes himself as that tongue that ever sweet. His tongue was ever sweet, and the phrase also hides a pun on the real author's name. And he gave her a noble, gentle place in his heart. That's what he means by was used in giving gentledom. This phrase in line 13, I hate, should have quotation marks. Because he says at the beginning, she said, I hate. Here is the problematic cause from hate away she threw. It is an example of amphibology. 
And that's where an ambiguity is in the grammatical stru structure, including mispunctuation. Stratfordians believe this is a pun on Hathaway, yet they also insist that the sonnets have no autobiographical content. You cannot have it both ways. If it is a pun on Hathaway, then there is autobiographical content. But as we have seen throughout this examination of these sonnets, the sonnets do have autobiographical content, therefore Hathaway is not a pun. In the context of the poem, it makes no sense to say she threw away something from hate. Could it be that she threw his love away? And this is an example of anastrophe. Anastrophe is a reversal of word order. Let's see what we can do with the way she threw. She threw away. But why from hate? Could her hate be born from this phrase, I hate? Therefore, we can read line 12, or 13 rather, like this. From her hate, she threw away my love. I believe this interpretation is correct because The last line is a turnaround where she is relieved she did not choose him. The turnaround is exactly what we did with a way she threw. We turned around the words to get the real meaning. She figuratively saved his life by saying, not you. In today's parlance, he dodged a bullet. The last phrase should therefore be within quotation marks. If these were all from her lips, then the phrase, I hate, really means not you. Then that puts altered into a new light. She changed the meaning of I hate to not you, which put an end to it. To what? To his chances at the relationship. He compares that ending to day following night. Let's solve some numerical puzzles. First, how many words are there in the sonnet? Second, how many uppercase letters are there in the sonnet? Don't forget the big T at the beginning. Next. Let's do some gematria sums. What is the gematria sum of the uppercase letter values in the first three lines? What is the gematria sum of the uppercase letter values in the poem? But, as per the hidden instruction, not you, subtract the gematria value for the uppercase letter that begins the line. We subtract the sonnet's number from the remainder we just got. What is the gematria sum of the smaller uppercase letter values in the poem? And then we add the sonnet's number to that sum. Here are the solutions. Puzzle one. The number of words in the sonnet is 98. The digits add to 17. Number two is our base number 17. 
That is how many uppercase letters there are in the poem. The solution for the third equation is 68, which is 17 times 4. The more complicated puzzle for number 4 ends with a digit sum and where the digits add to 17. The fifth puzzle is 17 times 2. Puzzle number 6 is 17 times 18. What are the odds that these same five numbers appear over and over in the Shakespeare authorship question? 17, 34, 68, 98, and infrequently, but it still happens, 179. What are the odds that this number is a multiple of 17? I suggest that the poet was giving us clues to his identity by incorporating these simple little number puzzles. Every number revolves around the number 17. We have 17 times 2, 17 times 4, 17 times 18. These sets of digits add to 17 each. Given these number clues, who could the poet really be? One poet comes to mind who had at least one mistress. And there can be no doubt that the number could only refer to a succession number. He was Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.